Welcome back, it's Lucy and Ellie from Rome and Found and we can't wait to bring you more history from our latest digging adventure. Kindly sponsored this week by the online history channel History Hit. We are here in Lincolnshire where people have inhabited this county since prehistoric times. We were occupied by the Romans for three centuries. The Anglo-Saxons then established the area as the Kingdom of Lindsay, but it wasn't too long before another invasion came sweeping across our agricultural plains, the Vikings. Turning up to our Lincolnshire permission, we couldn't be more excited as our favourite Roman field is free at last from its bean crop. This is a very special field to us that will always feel like home as it was actually the first field that we ever got permission on and is where we honed our digging craft. We've certainly dug plenty of holes in here. But as they say in the trade, a field is never done, so we leap at every opportunity to get back on this soil and it hasn't disappointed us yet. Today we're going to start on a loop round, circling through some of our favourite spots, first heading straight over to Hammy Corner and into the Medieval Patch before rounding it off in the Roman Hot Zone. Sounds like a very good afternoon to me. And of course we'll be keeping our eyes open for any surface finds on our way. Oh wow, look at that! One of the reasons that we love a day in this field is the wealth of ancient pottery that's always scattered across its surface. Pottery is always one of the first indicators and evidence of ancient activity and can help in narrowing down a search area. Greyware is the main pottery found in this field, leftover fragments from Roman domestic life, and I really can't believe my luck with this piece. It's not often that a decorated piece of Roman greyware emerges and this beautiful cross-hatched fragment was to come from a really special pot of the time. Just admiring it. After being distracted by all the pottery we've been finding, we finally have our first signal. There's a ten here somewhere. Maybe. In there, whatever that is. What have we got? Look. Not sure. Interesting shape. Interesting patina. And I'm afraid it's going to have to remain a bit of a mystery. A fragment broken in time and now too ambiguous to work out where it truly belongs. Settling into what might be a new hot zone, a strong signal immediately catches my attention. In Lincolnshire, we've always been an agricultural and farming county, and throughout time, cooking practices often remained the same, with one artifact in particular diligently serving families for centuries. That's not like deco mold like molded, like decorated, decorated. Mold, yeah. that's like white right off a cauldron. This pot leg dating from 1500 to 1700 AD comes from the Renaissance period in Britain and would have held the cooking pot at the optimum height above the fire. But what were people eating at this time? Well, the Renaissance period saw the arrival of the potato and the tobacco leaf. Many new foodstuffs were being imported and as the British Empire expanded, our cuisine too adopted these new ingredients. These newly imported foods were mainly limited to the kitchens of the rich, but unprepared and uncooked produce, such as fresh vegetables, were viewed with suspicion. Dairy products were also seen as inferior food and were mainly left for the poor, so the peasants really had the better diet, much like the peasant who would have eaten out of the pot that this leg emerged from. They would have consumed stews full of fresh vegetables, ate the fresh fruit grown in their gardens, and consumed wholemeal bread laden with butter and cheese. Whilst we're digging into all this history, here's a quick word from this video's sponsor. History Hit is an award-winning podcast network and online history channel where you can stream and download hundreds of hours of original history documentaries anywhere, anytime and on any device. Brought to you by expert historians such as Dan Snow, Professor Susanna Lipscomb, Dan Jones and many more. Uncovering a huge variety of topics, right from ancient history, world history, American history, to even modern history and present day current events. Not only do they already have hundreds of hours of expert led programs, but they add two more every single week. We've been using History Hit behind the scenes to delve deeper into the history behind our finds and are absolutely loving it. We'll be sharing the videos and podcasts that we've watched later on in this video. We are delighted to offer you your first three months subscription for just one pound a month using our code ROMANFOUND1. So if you want to go deeper into the history then check out the link in the description or the pinned comment below. Hey 
How often can you say that you found something for one of England's most devastating periods in history? Oh, look. Musket ball. What is it, Ellie? It's a musket ball. It's a good start. Something to fill up. The 17th century saw a civil war that forever altered the relationship between Parliament and monarch and resulted in the only ever execution of a British monarch. Marks and scars are left as traces in today's landscapes, but for the detectorist the most common find that we can uncover are musket balls, and we certainly find a fair few. Here in Lincolnshire we were at a military frontier between the Parliamentarian Eastern Association counties and the Royalist forces in the North and the Midlands. Our county played a pivotal role as loyal to the Crown we suffered several bloody battles, campaigns and sieges that resulted in Royalist defeat, marking the beginning of the end for King Charles I and his Royalist supporters. Could this humble find have come from the barrel of one of these Royalists? What's that look? <gasps> Is it? Oh, is it a button? What is that? I think it's a button. It's a button! No! No! I thought it was a Roman. Sure, that was going to be a Roman. Very shiny. Very on shiny that button, side. that. 15? That button had us thinking of Roman, so hopefully our wish has come true with this next signal. The Roman period stretches over a vast period of time, lasting in general for over a millennia, and our next find comes from one of its most turbulent periods. It's the Gallic Empire, the later 3rd century, where there were constant attacks by barbarian tribes on the northern borders and a seemingly never-ending conflict with Persian rulers that creates utter chaos, as usurpers claim power at any opportunity. So naturally their coinage and economy collapsed, and there was simply not enough coins being minted to supply the demand. Rather quickly, forgeries and imitations came in to plug the gap. Coins exactly like this rather grotty Roman, a coin in the trade often known as a barbarous radiate, identified by his often crude artistry, diminutive size and spiky crown. The Roman history books are written by men, so it is rare that we get to hear a woman's voice or even gain a perspective upon their life in ancient Rome. Roman coinage, however, is one place where their faces appear proudly, alongside reverses that contain meaning behind their personality and importance. This is actually the first time that we have ever found one such coin depicting a Roman empress, and this is the Empress Helena, the mother of Constantine the Great. Possibly one of the more famous of Roman empresses, Helena is a verified saint and is credited with discovering Christ's true cross. The legend goes that on a pilgrimage to Jerusalem she discovered three crosses. These crosses were brought to the bedside of a distinguished lady who was dangerously ill. The lady touched each cross, but it wasn't until she laid her hand upon the third, Christ's true cross, that she was immediately cured. Helena ordered the construction of a magnificent basilica above the spot where the cross had been found, the Basilica of the Holy Sepulchre. Reflecting Helena's important religious work, the reverse of this coin shows the goddess Pax, the goddess of peace, alongside the inscription Pax Publica, dedicated to peace for the public. Never. Never. <laughs> if you want to see more epic finds like this one, then be sure to hit that subscribe button and support our channel. Is this Roman hotspot going to live up to its name with this next signal and bring in a third? Oh, oh. what's that look? Something down there. Just there. Oh, look at him. There's a Roman. Have we got any detail? I think we might do. When you think of the Roman Empire, its famous army is surely one of the first things that comes to mind. Rome held one of the most effective military forces of the ancient world, with half a million soldiers under its command at its peak, so it's natural that this military might was reflected in the iconography upon its coinage. 
Oh, I think he might be a bit. Oh no, there's a, there's a little something bit of a there. person on that side. Which means a bus has got to be hiding on here somewhere. About there, I think. Ghost oh, of a yeah. head on there. Well, starting to get some coming up now. There. The goddess Victory, like depicted here upon this Roman coin, was a symbol of military success and served as a constant reminder of Victory's role in ensuring favourable military outcomes, because in Roman religion they believed that their gods and goddesses controlled everything in their lives. Rome's military success was only down to their worship of goddess Victory. In fact, she was so worshipped that a temple on the Palatine Hill in Rome was dedicated to her, and festivals and gladiatorial games were often held in her honour. Yet upon this coin she is also holding an olive branch, a symbol which represents the aftermath of victory, where harmony is restored. She not only brings triumph, but also stability and order to the Roman Empire, a powerful goddess and powerful image who makes one of the more frequent and common appearances on Roman currency. Is that my biggest piece today? I need to get them all out at the end just to decide. <laughs> Some of you may already know that the only competition that comes between us is in the eyes only finds. And Ellie really thought she'd snag the top spot with this piece, but wait until she sees my next find. Bit of the marking on it. Yeah. And they would have made that with their thumb. <laughs> That's so cool. So, such a great piece. Pottery find of the day. <laughs> Ooh, oh, better than the other bit. Found this piece, which looks quite normal. Yeah. Turned it over. I think we need to spritz it. That is the, water on it. That is the best. Oh, wow. Look at that. Holy, that's special. That is special. When we thought the pottery couldn't get any better. Ten? Something here. Is this a spoon? Is this a spoon? I think it might be. I don't know, is it some kind of... No, it's no. tractor. <laughs> is it a spoon? <laughs> It kind of looked like a really, really bent It looked like handle. a bent spoon, didn't it? No. We have a piece of tractor. Funny. Seven, eight. Yeah. Oh, is that there? What's that look? Ooh. What have we got? Oh, a bit of a ring thing, look. Oh, yeah. There we go. Oh, I like the bit we found earlier. Yeah, very similar to the bit we found earlier. Six. Oh. Like Is that Roman number four? Grot number four. Grot number four. <laughs> oh, glory exorcitus. Is it? Oh, Double yeah. Double standard. Brilliant. This reverse is possibly our most common Roman coin find, the double standard glory of the army, Gloria exorcitus. But just how much glory was there to be found serving in the Roman army? Well, for the humble Roman soldier, life was pretty hard and expectations were high. They often marched 30 miles in a day and any mistakes were sorely punished. Death and injury was often just around the corner. So naturally, Roman history is full of mutinies by soldiers against their superiors. But nevertheless, they were a pretty fearless force and every emperor knew that they needed the army on their side to maintain their seat of power, hence why they are celebrated so often upon Roman coinage. Lovely 
I don't know, I need a temple to this one. What have we got, Ellie? Shiny little tombak button. <laughs> Just chilling on the surface there. Second button for the Oh. It's a little. Ooh. Very fine copper nail, look. That's quite lovely. Very fine one. I like that, though. <laughs> There aren't many civilizations that capture people's imaginations more than the Vikings. 1415. Easy. What have we got there? Ooh. What is it? Is it silver? Is it silver? Not quite. Is it a button? Ooh. I can't tell. That. There's writing on it. It's quite guilty though. It's definitely guilt on that. What is it? Do you have a look? Yeah. No, that's like definitely like goldy on that side. And that's definitely not English on that side. That's pretty strange. Almost looks like Arabic y, doesn't it? Yeah. Like joined together writing. It's definitely a bit of silver though. Definitely a bit of silver, yeah. The Vikings were fast moving sailors who swept around the coast of Europe, looting, raiding, trading, and seizing land to settle upon. Here in Lincolnshire, we were part of the Dane Law, the area of England that officially belonged to the Vikings, and they had several Viking camps here, with the most prominent being found at Torxey. But in the Dane law, a unique and unusual economy emerged under the Vikings as they continued to operate a North European bullion-based economy, despite also issuing official coins as the natives were used to. It is this bullion-based economy that we're seeing evidence of here, as it would have consisted of silver ingots, ornaments, and foreign coins like this one deliberately cut into small pieces. Silver in this economy was valued by weight, and the primary source of silver fueling the bullion economy was silver durhams that were acquired by the Vikings through the sale of slaves and furs. This small fragment of 9th century silver Islamic durham is none other than a piece of Viking hack silver used as payment via Viking raider 1,200 years ago. If this glimpse into the Viking world has left you wanting to know more about these turbulent peoples and their lives, then we can only recommend this excellent episode available on History Hit, How the Vikings Changed the World, which digs deep into the history of the Vikings, where they came from, to their discoveries and lifestyles. <laughs> Ending the day on a final grotty Roman, the Roman field has once again not disappointed. We've had some of the best pottery pieces we've ever found, countless Romans including our first ever Empress, and finally our first ever piece of Viking hack silver. What a day! We would also like to thank this video sponsor, History Hit, and if you're feeling inspired by all of today's finds and want to learn more history, then use our code ROMANFOUND1 to get your first three month subscription for just £1 a month. Thanks for watching!